Hello and welcome, PML fans. I am your host, Admin Joe here, and with me, I have the coach for the Los Angeles Nintendo Kings, Danny Mack. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy to be here. How you doing today, Danny? Uh, pretty good, actually. Just enjoying a day off. I uh, stayed up a little bit late yesterday because I was actually running some calcs for the team because I'm really looking forward to week one. So. <laughs> Eager and ready to go. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, well, let's go ahead and start off with the first question here. What made you want to join a draft league? Uh, this isn't my first draft league. I've done it a couple times. Uh, that being said, I was actually uh, looking to get into a draft league for Gen 8 for the first time because uh, – I haven't really delved into competitive up until about the Isle of Armor came out. I was really uh, more focusing on the uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate competitively, and I kind of put Pokemon aside for a while. But uh, with all the additions of Isle of Armor, with all the Pokemon, the new moves that came out, um, I thought it'd be very interesting, and I was very intrigued to try to jump back into competitive. And one of the best ways to do that, aside from what I usually do, playing Showdown and Battle Spot singles and whatnot, is to join a draft league. And I feel like you're running a pretty good draft league here, so I figured I'd give it a shot. All right, that's awesome, man. So the second question is, uh, what drew you to PML Draft? Well, um, I believe I actually uh, encountered PML uh, just looking through some random uh, Facebook groups on, like, uh, you PokeTuber stuff and stuff like that because I do end up looking and browsing through those communities. And I remember we uh, had spoke because we tried to do a, a draft league previously. Uh, I think last year it was, I believe. Yeah. And, um you know, it seemed like it was a very well-run uh, organization. You have a really tight-knit community, a good, a good bunch of loyal uh, people that uh, uh, seem to root for the teams here. And I just felt like I wanted to contribute to that, you know, because I just enjoy entertaining people and and uh, I enjoy trying to, like, battle all different kinds of play styles because that's the beauty of a Pokemon is that you can take a team and uh, you can make it completely your own, right? You can make a Pokemon completely your own. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that's what just made me feel like this was a good opportunity to play in this league because uh, I felt I saw the very people from all over the world. Like I noticed that was one of the things, by the way, that you guys had people from all over the world, and I thought it might be interesting to dip my toe into that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and we actually have uh, two Ireland uh, coaches in this draft as well. That's awesome. And uh, the two people who won our draft leagues this season, uh, singles draft league was won by a guy from Australia. We sent his medal over there, and – the doubles draft league was won by a guy in Ireland, and we sent his medal there as well. Well, that's awesome. Here's hoping that uh, you know, you could send one my way until out to California. <laughs> oh yeah, it'd be a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> really though. All right. Well, um, also, uh, obviously, everyone wants to win, and that's what we're here for. But mm -hmm. what strategically are you trying to accomplish with your team this season? Well. Just because I have the actual uh, teams in front of me right here. But just looking at the team that I have, um, I just want to have fun. Like, uh, there's so much variation I feel like I could do because I'm a very big proponent of quote-unquote heat sets. So uh, I like unpredictability. I like uh, doing things that aren't the norm. And I feel like draft is one of the best places to experiment, things like that. And the teams that I um, – that I drafted, you know, stuff like Tier 1 Cinderace, Azumarill, Mandibuzz, those are very standard Pokemon, but I feel like they also have different sets that you can run in certain specific ways that is just going to make it so entertaining. And one of the draws that I want to do, as far as uh, when I pull up to a battle, is I want someone to be like, whoa, when they're watching it, like, whoa. I can't believe that worked type of appeal. Just doesn't matter if I win or lose. Obviously, I want to win, but if I can win while also having a lot of fun with the Pokemon, I think that's my main goal right here. Oh, yeah, all for the fans, right? Oh, definitely. Got to gotta give them what they want. <laughs> yeah, because I look over your team right here, and pretty much everyone has, you know, you got those big hitters, uh, bulky Pokemon, and kind of ha uh, kind of Pokemon that people would think they know the sets that are going to be brought with them. So, oh, what, yeah, absolutely. What do you think you can do to make it a little different? Well, um, I'm not obviously trying to give away too much strategy because I think that's something more of like a wait-and-see approach I want to do. Uh, but I have already, just for just to clarify, I've already taken an extensive look at all the teams in the league, and I've already like thought of some really – what I want to bring against each team already. I already have a general idea because I don't know if I'm going to be doing more free agent trades or pickups or trades or anything like that. But uh, um, 
for example, I can give you like Azumarill. Azumarill is a very varied Pokemon. Like obviously, most people are gonna expect me to bring Belly Drum on Azumarill, but obviously there he can run defensive options like Assault Vest. He can run stuff like Choice Band. He can also run the Parish Trap Whirlpool set with Sap Sipper, and it's just a very viable Pokemon in my opinion for very flexible situations. Uh, so that's what I'll give you all for free. <laughs> Pretty much sell you these kinds of sets that I'm thinking of. All right. Well, yeah, that's very generous of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and also I did want to delve into that trade you did. Um, you had Sir Fetch with the Scrappy ability and obviously a powerhouse and first impression. What made you want to switch that out with Gallade? Well, Gallade, I feel, gave me a lot more options, right? Because Sir Fetch, while it is a really extremely hard hitter and Scrappy is a great ability because it means that Ghost cannot switch into his moves, um, he was very lacking in speed tier. So as an offensive presence, like I feel like he got outsped by a lot of other common threats that could revenge kill him, like Psychic and Flying. Um, and while Gallade also has a, a, the uh, the weakness to Flying being a fighting type as well, Gallade has a much better speed tier, has a lot better defensive options as well, and a lot better deeper move pool in my opinion. Because while, yes, I am losing out on a priority move in first impression that's as strong as it is from Sir Fetch, um, Gallade also has in access to Shadow Sneak. Um, he has access to stuff like Will-O-Wisp and other little heat techniques that you can bring onto him. Plus, Gallic can be more varied in his EV spread. Like, I can run a full, fully offensive set, max speed, max attack, you know, max max, whatever. Or I can just run one that's completely spadef because he has a really great spadef stat as well. Max HP, max spadef, and bring it in for a more defensive stat. So I think uh, Gallic gives me a lot. Sorry? All right, sounds good. Um, so, yeah, just to re-answer the question, because it cut off shortly before this, but um, Sir Fetch for Gallade was kind of easy, because uh, Sir Fetch was just a straight-up fighting-type Pokemon, and it had a very middling, if not small, speed tier for an offensive type, uh, offensive threat, which does just fighting. And uh, Gallade, I feel like, gave me just better coverage overall, because while it is also a fighting type, it's also a psychic type, so it gives me the psychic type coverage. A lot better, more, um, I guess, a lot more options when it came to move pool because Gallade has so many moves that it can learn uh, and all like I said better spade tier so and it also has very very better uh, defensive stats like Spadef is really good gargantuan almost <laughs> to be honest especially if you run like an assault vest set so and all it gives me a lot more leeway in the team builder process so I feel like Gallade was a very good pick and I'm really happy I got him yeah and um, one set you didn't bring up the bulk up set that's a pretty heat set to bring too oh yeah definitely all right well we can go on and move on to the next question here, and that is, which Pokemon that you drafted do you think will have the biggest impact on your season? Well, I, w I don't want to go ahead and say Cinderace, because Cinderace is obviously a really great Pokemon in this format. Uh, Libero is an, an, an astounding ability. But aside from that, I want to say, uh, looking at my team here, I actually think that Rose Raid or um, or uh, was it Rose Raid and I think uh, Piloswine are actually going to be very big MVPs on my team just because uh, Rose Raid has is another one of those mon that has so much variety, right? Because you could run a Choice Spec set, uh, it's consistent T Spiker, so it's going to give that status off. It also has gets regular Spike, so it can set up a lot of stuff. And Piloswine likewise also being. Uh, a consistent stealth rocker, not being uh, o code by a lot of moves with a Violite running a max defense or max HP uh, type of uh, build. Even with no attack investment, it still does pretty good damage with a uh, good uh, Earthquake and Icicle, sta uh, Icicle Spear and Icicle Crash, sorry, um, Stab, because those stabs are just very good offensively and there's not a lot of stuff that wants to switch into it consistently, especially taking stealth rock damage. So I think those two Pokemon are going to be very consistently on my teams just because I feel like they offer so much things um, in in that supports the team in general, right? So I think those two is going to be very much the glue that holds teams together. Yeah, I actually had both of those on my last draft team, and I ran a pretty heat set with uh, the Roserade. Um I had it specs modest, but I still had T spikes on it as a lead. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get double T spikes up at the beginning and then recall it and specs pretty much ran house later. Oh yeah, that's that's an amazing set. It just it also has a very good move pool. I mean you have stuff like Dazzling Gleam, Leaf Storm hits like a truck. Um Sludge Bomb is also a good stab to have against a lot of the fairy types in the format. So Rose is just a really solid Pokemon overall. Yeah, and then with that natural cure ability and technician, you you can't lose either way. 
Oh, absolutely. And I think one of the best things about Rosary, too, is that now it has access to weather ball and whatnot. So if you run some sunny day weather ball, I mean, it can hit those uh, hit other grass types with super effective fire type damage. You know what I'm saying? And I think this becomes a really strong move in the sun. So I think that's very fun. Mm -hmm. And you did get sniped on the Magnazone pick, so you ended up picking Magneton. How do you mm -hmm. think that helps your team? Does it make it better or worse? I mean... Obviously, I would have preferred Magnezone just because it's Magnezone, right? It's a very great Pokemon. But uh, Magneton still, I think, is going to get the job done that I wanted to do just because of its dual abilities. Like, I could run some kind of set where, uh, well, because it has obviously Magnet Pull and Sturdy. And Sturdy, for obvious reasons, is very viable. It gives you a free Focus Sash on anything. So it's going to be able to get some last ditch effort Thunder Waves or Confusions off or something like that. And it's going to just be very nice to have that in the back in case I ever need to. Plus, it gives me some really key. Um, Resist, obviously, being steel and electric, very good defensive and offensive type since he really only suffers against um, ground types, which is why I have Bandabuzz and Weezing potentially with Levitate in the back to kind of answer for that. Uh, but Magneton itself still hits really hard. It's only got 10 um, less special attack points in its, uh, you know, just overall base special attack than Magnezone, so it still hits like a truck, especially analytic sets, because if you if it's going to be slower than most Pokemon to catch a Pokemon switching in, analytic does, I believe, 1.3 more damage mm -hmm. with all that, so a Specs Flash Cannon, a Specs Thunderbolt, nothing's going to want to really switch into that, because it's going to take a lot of damage regardless, so I think Magneton can still be very valuable, considering that it also has... What, the, what it lacks in the special attack stat, it actually makes that up for in the speed stat. It has 10 more points of speed than Magnezone overall. So even a Scarf Magneton set could actually be valuable as well. Um, but, yeah, I think it's definitely going to be a very fun Pokemon. It's not the one that I'm most attached to on the team, if I'm being honest. I might look into maybe uh, trading it later on, depending on how it performs. But I still, I'm still i still pretty happy with the pick, because Magneton's a fun Pokemon. Oh, yeah, and it's always fun to have that Eevee bo Light boost. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And um, also, uh, you have Clefairy on your team, and I didn't think of it when you picked it up, but you gave some answers on how it's a reliable stealth rocker and all that. Um, and it's great defensively, but how is it going to help you if it needs to be offensive? Well, I don't ever think that it's going to be offensive in this type of build. I think uh, it's just going to be one of those mods, like I think um, Josh said that in, in, the, uh, in the grading video that it's going to be a Pokemon that it just sits there and it has access to a lot of support moves which is what I want I wanted a straight up supportive Pokemon like obviously it has access to moon blast and other things like that so it's still going to be able to get some chip damage off it's not even if it gets taunted or whatnot it's not going to be the end of the world for Clefairy but it has access to stuff like uh, teleport has access to stealth rock wish support uh, aromatherapy and uh, soft boiled things of that nature so it can just Violite and be very bulky, take the hits that my, the rest of my team does not want to hit, and still heal up the rest of the team. And uh, one of the cool things about it is that with the addition of the Clefairies coming in from Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, it has access to stuff like Counter as well. So you could run a Focus Sash Counter Clefairy on a Dynamax Pokemon and get you a free kill. So I think it's just going to be a very stellar Pokemon to bring in in certain niche situations, right? But I figure for a Tier 5 is a really solid Violite pick, so that's why I ended up getting yeah, and you said it's a niche pick, but in draft leagues, the niche picks are probably the most important. Exactly. All right. Well, we will move on to the next question here. What team do you think will be your biggest challenge this season? Well, looking at the teams, I have them in front of me right now. Um, there's definitely some threats out there. Like, I know um, I like the, the core of the Unova Steelers, for example. We've got Hydreigon, Alakazam, Magnezone. Really good Pokemon. Uh, I, I think, they were, was that the team that you actually started picking for them because they weren't around at first? Or? Yes. So, yeah, I think you picked very solidly for them. They got some good threats on there. Um, I think my team can kind of deal with that, but definitely is going to be somebody that I'm worried about. Um, obviously, the Aerons and Dracovish. Dracovish is a threat no matter what. That's why I got banned in Smog on OU. <laughs> um, and obviously, your team is definitely threatening as well, and I think it's one of the ones that I'm going to have a lot of trouble breaking through as well simply because you have good defensive Pokemon. Like they said in the, in the grading video uh, that you have a lot of flexibility in your team building, and I think that's such a plus. So uh, it's going to be hard to predict anything that's going on. Uh, but I think that's going to be one of the one of the teams that I feel like, because like you said, it's going to be the last team, uh, last game of the season. So uh, it's definitely going to be a hell of a battle no matter what. So I think if anything, those are the top three teams that I feel I have on my radar to give me some trouble. Oh yeah, and seeing as that, that's kind of what I was going for in my draft is the flexibility part because I, it, you clearly have some powerhouses there, and I don't want you to be able to just predict what I'm going to bring and sweep me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Sometimes unpredictability is your best friend, so. 
All right. Well, we'll finish off with the last question. Um, it's not Pokemon related at all, but it was an interesting, fun question. I've been asking everyone else. I'm sure you've mm -hmm. been watching the videos. So yeah, here it is. If you had an obscure superpower, what would you choose? Obscure superpower? Uh, it'd be the power to refill things. Because I could refill anything. Like, my wallet's empty, I'm going to refill it. My bowl of food's empty, I'm going to refill it. If I'm lacking motivation to create a video, I could refill it. So I think it would be something like that would just be a super, like, <laughs> useful ability no matter what. So. Oh, yeah, man. Well, thank you for joining me here. Um, anything left you want to say to the viewers before we go? Um, no, I just hope that you guys root for the Nido Kings. I hope you guys enjoy the videos that we put out, not just me, but everybody's. And uh, I hope that uh, you guys will end up following us more for the, more content in the future. So thank you so much for having me. All righty, man. Well, that was Danny with the Los Angeles Nido Kings, and we'll see you guys next time. See ya.